This presentation will provide you with a brief overview of marine planning and the Welsh National Marine Plan. On the 12th of November 2009, the Marine and Coastal Access Act came into force and provided the statutory basis for the plan-led regime to manage coastal waters in the United Kingdom. The marine planning regime started in March 2011 with the adoption by all four UK administrations of the UK Marine Policy Statement. The Marine Policy Statement provides the high-level policy context within which marine plans have been developed and sets out a framework for preparing marine plans and taking decisions affecting the marine environment. It contains the shared UK vision of having clean, healthy, safe, productive and biologically diverse oceans and seas. It also provides the high-level policy context within which national and sub-national marine plans will be developed, implemented, monitored, amended and will ensure appropriate consistency in marine planning across the UK marine area. This slide provides the legislative hierarchy that demonstrates how the Welsh National Marine Plan was developed, stemming from the Marine and Coastal Access Act 2009 to the Marine Policy Statement 2011 to the Welsh National Marine Plan that was adopted in November 2019. Now the plan is in place, relevant public authorities must take account of it in their decision making under Section 58 of the Marine and Coastal Access Act. Marine planning is a devolved function in the United Kingdom. Welsh ministers are responsible for preparing a marine plan for Welsh waters, highlighted in the area in blue. Respective governments have been working closely over the last few years to ensure our planning regimes complement each other as each has been developed to slightly different timescales. The Welsh Marine Plan area is adjacent to two English marine regions, the Northwest and Southwest Plan areas, and draft plans for these regions were consulted on in spring 2020. It also shares boundaries with Northern Ireland, the Isle of Man and the Republic of Ireland, and the Republic of Ireland also consulted on their plan this spring. The management of activities in Welsh waters is split between retained and devolved functions, with some areas the responsibility of Welsh ministers and other functions such as defence and large-scale developments being retained by UK government. The plan has been adopted with the agreement of the UK Secretary of State for Environment, Food and Rural Affairs. The plan takes a 20-year view whilst recognising that certain activities may need to be planned for beyond this period and others are likely to change significantly during the plan's lifetime. Monitoring and reporting on the effectiveness of the plan is a statutory requirement in the Marine and Coastal Access Act and is an important step in the planning process. We will review and report at least every three years on the effects of policies in this plan. Welsh Government are responsible for developing a marine plan for the Welsh inshore and offshore area. The National Development Framework is a new land development plan which extends to the mean low water mark and will set direction for development in Wales from 2020 to 2040. The NDF, a marine plan, will identify opportunities and guide development both onshore and offshore, supporting integrated decision making and collaboration across marine and terrestrial interfaces and boundaries. This means there will be an overlap of planning regimes. We've produced an infographic which is in part pictured on this slide to show the overlap between the planning regimes and it can be accessed via the link on screen. It is also important that the plan interacts with other planning regimes in the United Kingdom and with the marine plans currently being developed by neighbouring governments due to a number of shared issues in the cross-border areas. So why are we planning in the first place? The Welsh marine plan area comprises diverse and valuable natural resources that underpin our well-being. Welsh Government is undertaking marine planning for the sustainable management of our seas, helping ensure they are healthy and resilient so current and future generations can benefit from them. As you can see from some of the pictures on the screen, there are numerous activities taking place in our seas, from fishing to tourism activities, energy generation and telecommunications cables running along our seabed. All of these activities share space for our marine ecosystems. Until recently, decisions would have been taken on a first-come, first-serve basis. Marine planning will help us manage the competing demands for space and help marine proposals to develop in a way that complement each other. A marine plan will provide a framework for decisions made in or affecting the marine environment. To aid sustainable development and safeguard the welfare of future generations, way of life and our natural environment, Welsh Government has introduced two pieces of legislation. The Wellbeing of Future Generations Act 2015 requires public bodies to carry out sustainable development and work to improve the economic, social and cultural wellbeing of Wales, working through the seven wellbeing goals. The Environment Act 2016 requires public authorities to promote the resilience of ecosystems and maintain and enhance biodiversity. 
This will be in accordance with natural resources policy and is to be locally administered through area statements and measured through a state of natural resources evidence base. As the marine plan has been developed in accordance with and following the well-being of future generations and sustainable management of natural resources principles, then taking decisions in accordance with the marine plan will help public authorities meet obligations under these two acts. So what does marine planning do? Marine planning will support the sustainable management of our seas, taking into account economic, social and environmental considerations. The plan's vision, objectives and policies direct decision makers and users towards more consistent evidence-based decisions and sustainable use of our marine resources. It is a new consideration for relevant public authorities when taking decisions which have the potential to affect the plan area. The plan's vision, policies and objectives will ensure that those making decisions within this environment, like developers bringing forward proposals and authorities making decisions on those proposals, do so in a sustainable way. The plan, along with other relevant planning documents, will set a framework for those decisions. So what has happened so far? A draft plan was consulted on between December 2017 and March 2018. There were over 80 responses to the consultation, so throughout 2018 and into 2019, we considered the responses and worked with stakeholders on the key points. The plan was finalised, published and adopted on the 12th of November 2019. Now it is adopted, authorisation or enforcement decisions will need to be taken in accordance with it. Additionally, the plan is a relevant consideration in other decisions affecting the marine area, so the plan itself. The plan introduction sets the scene and provides the context for marine planning. Then comes the plan, vision and objectives. There are 25 general policies. These policies are overarching and cross-cutting and cover areas such as nature conservation, heritage, coastal communities and economic growth. Then, 17 sector-specific policies, which relate to the diverse types of activity that occur in Welsh seas. The policies are either safeguarding, which looks after development in locations of importance, or supporting, which encourages sector development. The general and the sector policies collectively support the sustainable development of Welsh seas in line with the Wellbeing of Future Generations Act and the Environment Wales Act. That concludes the presentation and there'll be further presentations to follow on the content of the plan, how to apply it and what Section 58 duties are under the Marine and Coastal Access Act. And finally, this slide provides you with further resources to help you understand and apply the plan as well as contact details for the team.